الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وعلى من والاه ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I ask Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that with His tawfiq and mercy as He gathers us in this masjid, Allah gathers us in Jannah al Firdaus al Ala. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala count all of us among those people who seek to learn the religion. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala send His mercy upon them and calmness upon them, and the angels cover them. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala remembers them among those who are better than us. So before we start, uh, I would like to ask, uh, I'm really happy to see so many youth there, young youngsters there. So can I ask all of them to come forward, please, inshallah. All of the youngsters, because I want today's, the lecture should be, it's not lecture, it's a little bit of uh, communication between us as well, inshallah, okay? Zakumullah khair. I'm really sorry to take you out of your comfort zone. As Brother Umer has uh, explained about uh, this topic, uh, that uh, there is a, this is the series of lectures, and this is the third lecture. Uh, the first one was preparation for the grave, and then the second was life in the grave, and this one uh, is the day of judgment, and Jannah, and Jahannam, and al shafaa These are coming in future months. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give best reward to those who organize this, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability that we learn uh, and uh, uh, act upon it in our lives and convey the message to others as well. So today's topic is uh, the Day of Judgment. SubhanAllah, the Day of Judgment, the topic is so vast and so big. So there are so many angles to look into it. But today uh, we will look into the angle where what other things hap will happen on the Day of Judgment, inshallah. So the Day of Judgment, just imagine for a second the life without day of judgment, without having the concept of day of judgment, just imagine your life. Subhanallah. Trouble. Trouble. Without any purpose, there is no purpose of being good or bad. What is the meaning of being very respectful or being a terrible person? If there is no day of judgment, then. There is nothing, subhanAllah, there is nothing. Was there animals over there? Uh, I didn't follow that quite. So was there animals over there? Yes, worse than animals, yes. And this is what the people, if you have seen some of the terrible things happen around us sometime when we read in the news and things. So some of the things people do when they don't have this concept, subhanAllah, it's, it's very, very unbelievable what people do and what people uh, speak about. So it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given us this teaching and the belief and the faith in the Day of Judgment. And our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that uh, uh, there is no purpose if there is no Day of Judgment to give you the Quran, give you the teachings of Islam. So what is the point of this all? So there will be no point of being good, looking after your parents, looking after your children. There will be no manners at all. You will have no differentiation between your sister, your wife, your daughter and your mother. There is no day of judgment, subhanAllah. So it's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that إِنَّ الَّذِي فَرَضَ عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لَرَادُّكَ إِلَىٰ مَعَكَ The one who has given you the Qur'an of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who has made you obliged to follow the Qur'an, one day he is going to combine you, bring you back to a appointed place. And that is the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make our lives uh, that we are preparing for the Day of Judgment and make the Day of Judgment easy for all of us. Amen. Does anybody know which day the Day of Judgment is going to happen? Yes. Uh, I, I really want the youth to speak, yes. Uh, when nobody says, la ilaha illallah. Yes, the time when they, they nobody left to say la ilaha illallah, yes, very good. But which day is that one? Friday. Friday, very good, mashallah, yes, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said it will be on Friday. Friday is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the best day the sun ever came out. And then that day Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was born and he was entered into Jannah, he was taken out of the Jannah at the same time and the day of judgment is going to establish on, the, uh, on Friday. 
So this is what we know, alhamdulillah. And if anybody wants to know the events which will take place on the Day of Judgment, how it will look like, just a glimpse of it. If you want to know, so then there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يَنْزُرَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ كَأَنَّهُ رَأْيَ الْعَيْنِ فَلْيَقْرَ إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُبِّرَتْ وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ انْفَطَرَتْ وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ انْشَقَّتْ so the, there are three surahs, this, okay, surah, surah Al-Takbir, Surah Al-Infitar, and Surah Al-Inshiqaq. Three surah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you want to know what is going to happen on the Day of Judgment, because the Day of Judgment is not something easy. It's very, very hard thing. It's a very huge thing. The events which are going to happen, they are very terrifying events. So if you want to know, go and read these two, three surahs uh, from the Juz Ammah. And we read with the meaning, read with the meaning, inshallah you'll understand what is going to happen on the object. And look at this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given so many different names, so many different names to the Day of Judgment, subhanallah. Some of the scholars has counted around 25 names which are famous in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu uh, So this, so many names, they show the importance and the, uh, the severeness of the day. So it's not easy. So can somebody tell me the names of the Day of Judgment, please? The boys, come on. What is the name of the Day of Judgment? Yes. The Day of Qiyamah. The Day of Qiyamah, one of the names is Al Qiyamah, yes. Yes, what do you want to say? I was about to say Yawm Al Qiyamah. Yawm Al Qiyamah, yes, that is in Arabic, yes, very good. Anybody else? Yawm Al Deen, yes, Yawm Al Deen, the Day of Judgment itself, yes, Al Deen, yes. A deen is the day of judgment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges between people. Yes. Who else? Yes, brother. Yawm al Hashar, the day of gathering and assembling. Yes, very good, mashallah. Now the brothers can jump in as well, inshallah. Yawm al Hisab. Yawm al Hisab, okay, the day of account and accessing. Yes, brother. The same thing you wanted to say. Yawm al Khulud. Yawm al Khulud, yes, the day when. Whatever will be decided, that will be permanent. Either you are in the Jannah or in your Halfa, permanent life, eternal. Yes. And similarly, Al Qari'ah, Al Tamat Al Kubra, Al Haqqah. So these are the names like great events. It's not small things. Each one have different, different. Al Qari'ah is striking. Al Zalzala, you know, earthquake. Subhanallah. These sort of names Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. And each name has a different angle to look into the Day of Judgment, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Day of Judgment easy for all of us. Just to imagine how severe that they will be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a little bit of explanation. There are so many different, different paragraphs in the Quran, ayats in the Quran, you can get it. Ya yuhannatu taqu rabbakum, O people, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna zalzalata sa'ati shayun azim. The quake of the Day of Judgment is really great. It's huge, it's big. It's not a small, it's not a minor thing, just day of judgment, oh, listen and forget. No, it's huge. It's just to understand that when يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ أَمَّا أَرْضَعَةٍ Subhanallah. You will see at that day that the mother who is feeding milk to the baby, she will just not bother about the baby. She will not bother about the baby. You know the mothers who will carry them. When the baby cries, subhanAllah, mother's heart comes out out of, the, out of the love to the baby. But at that day, she will not bother. She will not bother. Not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kullu dhati hamlin hamlaha. And the pregnant lady will lose her pregnancy out of the fear of this day, subhanAllah. And these things are very, very severe. It's, it doesn't happen in normal cases. It happens in very, very severe cases. And you will find people drunk, unconscious, drunk. But they are not drunk in, in actual life. They are not drunk. But the severeness is so great of that day that everybody will feel that he is drunk, but they are not drunk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. Allah Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained to us how a person when he will die, as soon as he die, his qiyamah will start. As soon as you die, your qiyamah will start. But this is the day of judgment, the big day. That is qiyamah Yes, that is the qiyamah al-sughra. The, the per person when he die, it is the qiyamah al The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said his qiyamah established. So the, this is the first qiyamah, but this is the big qiyamah. So what happened? The people will be in the grave. So at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order and with the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
an angel, he will blow the trump. He will blow the trump. What is the name of that angel? Israfil alayhi salatu salam. Israfil alayhi salatu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the time he created him, since that time, till that day, what he is doing, he is just holding the, tr the, the trumpet in his mouth, horn in his, in his mouth, and his full concentration towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's just waiting for the command. As soon as Allah says, blow, he'll blow. So since his birth, his job is just, he's holding the trumpet and he look, looking for the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, paying full attention. And this is what angels do. Whoever angel was created for whatever purpose, they stay for that purpose. So this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said about Israfil alayhi salatu salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنُفِقَ فِي السُّورِ And the trumpet will be blown. So what will happen? فَسَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ So all of a sudden, everything whichever is in the heaven and the earth, they will faint. They will faint out of the fear. They will faint. Class, finish. All the people, and in some of the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, it says that the sound, when it will start, it will start slowly, people will start hearing, and then slowly they will put their neck down, and then they will fall, and then they will die. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. And then, accept whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to protect. And then, this is the first blow. This is the first blow where everything will finish. Every single individual will die, and then there will be another blow. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that ثم نفق فيه أخرى Then the second one will be blown. So what will happen? فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْزُرُونَ So everybody will stand up and they will be looking. They will be waiting. They will be waiting for the hashr. So this is what? So this is the second one. So when the second one happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the people will come out of the graves. All the people will come out of the graves. How they will come out? قُشَّعًا أَبُسَارُهُمْ They all will have their their sides down, humiliated, very looking, very afraid, because they know what is going to happen. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَأَنَّهُمْ uh, جَرَادٌ مُنْتَشِرٌ Subhanallah. They will be like the insects, small insects, when you see they go everywhere, subhanallah. Everywhere. And it, like the floating particles of the dust. They have no value. So they'll be coming like this so much. You know, when you take a sheet and then just you blow all the uh, dirt from it, so all these particles come out and you will see in the light, so the people will be like this. Everybody will be everywhere. This is what uh, going to happen. And when the person will come out, they will be running here and there. At that time, for each person, there will be two angels. Two angels. They will be pushing this person towards the hashim, towards the place of gathering, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made the gathering. And one of them is Sa'iq, the one who is driving him, and another is witness for him, Shaheed. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ uh, As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Surah Al-Qaf. So this is what happened. Everybody will be dragged. Everybody will be dragged. And then what happened? When these people are getting dragged to the Hashr, in one of the hadiths of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said the people will be of three categories. One of them, Rahibin wa Rahibin, those who have hope and love to see Allah and same time fear as well, fear as well. So the ulama says these are the people like us who have good deeds and bad deeds, evil, mix up. So for the good deeds we have the hope that Allah has accepted it. So we want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get the reward. But same time we have the fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish us. So out of that fear, we don't want to go there. But this is one kind of people. And another kind of people, these are the believers, shuhada, they are on the high, high, high rank people, high rank people. They know that they are going to be forgiven. Shuhada, siddiqeen, salihin. So what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, these people will be on their camels. They will be going, they will be dragged on their camels. You know how these camels will be? And one camel, two people, or three people, or four people, and some ten people as well. On each camel, they will be going there. And then there will be another category. And this category is the people who know that they are losers. They are losers. They did not listen to the command of Allah in this world. They did not believe in the Creator. They deny the Creator. They started having debates about the Creator. That they forget their own selves, 
their own their own self made they come from and they started having the doubts not only doubts but arguments with the creator thinking creator is like one of them so what will happen to them the fire will be dragging them the fire will be dragging them and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the fire will drag them so they get so tired if they stop to take the rest the fire will be next to them if they lie down the fire will be next to them if they take the just nap fire will be standing next to them if they are doing the evening fire will be with them until they will reach to the hashir to the place where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather all all of them subhanallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us among those people who go on the camels and then when these people are coming out and they are moving one of the important thing is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says allah will take them out of their graves the way he has created them he has created them you know the way allah has created us all of us how allah has created all without of us clothes. without clothes. clothes yes barefooted without clothes and we all will be walking as aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala and hashi explained that the people will be uh will be brought on the day of judgment naked barefooted and and without circumcision and circumcised so as they were born so in that manner they will come so aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha she asked o oh, prophet of allah everybody will be naked look everybody is thinking about whatever they have in their mind what matters to them most okay. subhanallah so she she has a oh, prophet of allah people will be naked so will they not see each other will they not see so look at the haya subhanallah so haya they were thinking about the haya on the day of judgment <coughs> and now we are feeling proud of being out of the haya subhanallah look at aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala will people not be looking at each other if we are naked if we are exposing ourselves so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said wa aisha the matter is not easy like this is ashaddu min hadha it will be very severe time nobody will bother about anybody nobody will bother about anybody allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about that time how he said in surah al-abas allah says fa idha ja'at as-saqa when this day of judgment the big sound will come yawma yafirru al-mar'u min akhihi the brother will be running away from another brother wa ummihi wa abi from the mother and from the father wa sahibatihi wa bani from the spouse and the children everybody will be running away from each other li kulli mar'in yawma izin minhum yawma izin sha'nu yughni everybody will be in their own state of mind that time nobody will bother about each other this is the day this is very very severe may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us so these people who are coming out some of them are the believers some of them are the non believers so everybody have a different way of coming out of their graves as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa nahshuruhum yawm al-qiyamati ala wujuhihim so the people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them out of their graves ala wujuhihim on their faces not on the feet some of them will be on the faces not only on the faces allah says um yawm wa bukmam wa summa so some of them will be blind some of them will be dumb deaf so they will not be able to look they will not be able to hear anything they will be on their faces and then ma'wa hum jahannam and these sort of people their final adobe will be the hellfire kullama qad akhabat zidnahum sa'ira when a word the fire of the hellfire uh, hell will go down allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fuel it to make it bigger may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us so these people some of them will be on their faces remember this blind on their faces deaf and dumb these these are few of the people they will be raised like this now some of the brothers sometimes they ask question that what about those who died by by drowning into the water they are not in the grave so how come they will come? <clears throat> what about those who died suicide and they burned themselves what about themselves so remember this the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said about one of the janaza janaza of hamza radhiyallahu ta'ala an the am of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the uncle of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that if i had no fear of the auntie of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sister of hamza radhiyallahu ta'ala anha safiya if i had no fear of her that it will hurt her i will let hamza to lie there without burying him without burying him so the insect would eat him and on the day of judgment he will come out of his those insects 
So a person, the way he will die, he will come out like that. If there is a shaheed, the Prophet ﷺ said, shaheed will come out and from his wounds, the blood will come out and he will be coming out, subhanAllah. The person who died in ihram while doing hajj and umrah, if he died in ihram, he will come saying talbiyah. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. So everybody had a different, different way of coming out on the, on the, on the day. And they all will come to the, the place of assembly. Place of assembly. And this place of assembly, remember, it is not the earth, this one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace this earth with another earth, the heaven with another heaven, and that earth will be flat. <coughs> that earth will be flat. There will be no ups and downs, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained, everybody will be gathered there. So there will be no ups that somebody will feel proud that, oh, I'm on the height. Somebody will be in the low, he will feel humiliated that he's not. No, no, everybody on the same ground. Same, same, plain ground. This is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. But the severity of that day will be that the sun will be very close. The sun will be very close, subhanAllah. Now if we get closer to the sun, whatever the distance we have between earth and sun, if we get a little bit closer, we will get burnt. If we go a little bit away, we'll get frozen. But on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us the way that we will bear the sun and the sun will be just a mile away. Just a mile away. So imagine, Allah will give us that ability to bear that sun, but everybody will be in big trouble because the, it was very, very hot. Very, very hot. And then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that sweat will come out of the humans so much so, so much so that if, if the boats were left to, so, to swim, so the boat will swim. And in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the people will be in their own sweat as per their sins. As per their sin, as many sins as you have, that much you will be drowning into those, uh, the, uh, into that sweat. So the Prophet wasallam said, some of the people will be till their knees, some of them will be till the hip, some of them will be till uh, till their shoulders, some of them will be the Prophet wasallam said, al jama. So it will come till their mouth; they'll be drowning into it. So may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect all of us. So everybody will have their own, their own problem at that time. So they, everybody will be in the sweat. So that day, that day will be very, very severe. How severe it is, just imagine the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that half of the day, half of the day will be equal to the length of 50,000 years. Half of the day, not full day, half of the day, this is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it will be at the length of 50,000 years years. But when it comes to the believer, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it will be like Zuhar till Maghrib or Asr till Maghrib, SubhanAllah. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala count all of us among the believers. May Allah give us our life upon Tawheed and make us die upon Tawheed and raise all of us on the Day of Judgment upon Tawheed. And then not only that, everybody will be in this pain. You can imagine the pain, everybody, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in this entire life, the, the biggest pain anybody can have is mouth, the death. So the pain of the death is very, very severe. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the pain on the Day of Judgment is much severe than the pain of the death. This is for those who deny Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But as far as it's concerned to the believer, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he will have just flu at that day. He will feel dizzy and a little bit flu. That's it. But compared to others, it's nothing. It's nothing. But for others, it will be huge, huge, and it will be very, very severe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So what will happen now? Everybody gathered. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish the scale now. Establish the scale. The balance will come there. Subhanallah. And we are going to establish the skills on the day of judgment and nobody will be wronged at that day. Whatever you deserve, you will get it. Whatever you did, you will get it. If you have a good deed or the bad deed equal to the size of an atom, very tiny, very minute, you will be rewarded for this or you will be punished for it. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do by establishing their skills. There is a beautiful hadith of the Prophet which speaks about the scale 
and two words. Who can tell me that one? The two words on the scale. Yes, light on the, lighter on the tongue and heavier on the scale. What is the two words? This is the last hadith in Bukhari. Good. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al -Azim. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said the two kalimah, very beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very easy on your tongue, very heavy on scale on the day of judgment. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah al-Azim. Keep mentioning these words all the time if you want to be safe on the day of judgment. When you are driving, say these words. When you are waiting, say these words. When you are in just waiting area, sometimes we get so frustrated in traffic and things. When we see the traffic, Lord of traffic, we can't do anything. Say this kalma instead of getting angry and cursing the person who is in front of us. Just say this kalma, subhanallah, you realize this time. So that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that if a man came and he said, give me the uh, guarantee of being in Jannah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, keep your tongue wet with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al -Azim. So this will be happening. There is another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa which explains about the importance of having the correct aqeedah, the correct belief in Allah. Understanding La ilaha illallah and Muhammad Rasulullah. There is a man, he will be brought to this scale, to the judgment. He'll have 99 books of records, full of evil deeds, full of sins. Maddul Basar. Each book is as far as you can see to the horizon. It's huge, huge. And this man will be brought, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, are you going to deny any of this? The man said, no Allah. These 99 books, they all are mine. Full of sins, they all are mine. I'm not going to deny any of them. Allah will ask, do you have any explanation for this? Do you have any explanation for this? The man will say, I don't have any explanation, Allah. These all are right. So Allah will ask him, but we have one card for you. We have one card for you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the man will reply and he'll say, God, what will this God do to me <laughs> compared to 99 books full of evil, full of sins? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the angels. The card will be brought. And the card will be placed place in one side of the balance and these 99 books and the card will be heavier, subhanAllah. And this card will have written, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This is what the Prophet Muhammad said. So if you have a single reward extra, good deed extra, you will be the people of Jannah. If it is less, then you will be people of the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So make sure you keep your la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah protected. It's not just the lip service. It's not just the lip service. It's more than that. Understand the meaning of it. Act upon it. Make you, make and feel proud of it. And make it the way of life in, in through, every day, 24-7. So this is La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. So this is what happened. That every, so the first thing that skills will be placed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the books. Everybody will have his suhuf, his book. Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the books in the right hand. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran in many different, different places. And these books are very, very detailed book. Whatever you do, it is in this book. لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحسها. It will not miss a single thing, neither minor nor major, but it will count. It count every single thing. It is written every every single thing. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wa Alaihi Wasallam was explaining about this and in many many different hadiths. Subhanallah, how people will get it. If you read Surah Al-Haqqah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned about this. The person who will get on his right hand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us among them. Out of the joy, he will shout and say, How muqra'u kitabiya? Come and read this book. Come and read this book, subhanallah. He'll be so happy, he'll be showing his result to everybody. I got it in my right hand. There is the biggest success on that day. Everybody, he will be shouting, How muqra'u kitabiya? How muqra'u kitabiya? Inni ranantu anni mulaqin hisabiya. I have full faith in Allah that one day I'm going to meet him. So the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, read this and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, allow him to get inside the Jannah, enjoy yourself, what you used to do in this world. <coughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us among them. 
And the person who will be given his book in his left hand on his back of his uh, back, so what will happen? This man will say, when he will say, Oh my God. Oh my God. You know my dad? When I die, it would have been finished. After the death, there would be no day of judgment. That would have been the last day. That will be his regret. And he will say, Subhanallah, halaka anni sultaniya. You know my all power? It has destroyed me. In this world, to gain that power, to seat the position, we do so many wrong things. So many wrong things we do, subhanallah. He will say at that day, that power has destroyed me. Halaka anni sultaniya. Ma aghna anni maliya. My wealth did not benefit me at all. And then what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the angels. Okay, don't let him jump here and there too much. Catch him. Catch him. Seize him. And tie him in 70 meters of chain. Tie him. And then throw him into the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So this is the suhuf. Suhuf will be given. This is another thing will happen on, the, on that day. And another thing which will happen, judgment. Assessing. Assessment of yours, accounting. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his very famous hadith, he gave us a very good parable of how it is going to happen. Actually, it's the event, what is going to happen on that day. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the Sahaba, "Mani muflis who is the bankrupt? Who is the bankrupt? Anybody want to answer? Who is the bankrupt?" <laughs> Yes, the same thing, but not that brother, somebody else. Especially youth. Who is the bankrupt person? What do you think? Who is the bankrupt? The rich. The rich one will be the bankrupt. Okay, this is one answer. Yes, brother? The one who does not have the good deeds, enough good deeds. All right, he is the bankrupt. Anybody else? Very good answers. Anybody else? Yes, brother. Is the one you know that day I mean, <coughs> all his good deeds was taken to someone else. I know the very good. Yeah, the, the other, you know, to him with the good. Deeds. Yeah, the one whose good deeds will be taken <coughs> to someone else. Look at this. How the Prophet sallallahu explained. He asked the Sahaba, "Who is Al Muflis?" So the Sahaba said, "Man la dirhamala hu." O Prophet of Allah, the one who does not have money, he is the Muflis. He is the bankrupt. So the Prophet sallallahu said, no, he's not the bankrupt. The bankrupt one is the one who will come on the day of judgment with his siyam, salah. He has the prayers in his account. He has the fasting in his account. He has good deeds in his account. He have, will bring his zakat with it. Mountains of good deeds he will bring with him. Mountains of good deeds. But when he will be coming into the judgment, all of a sudden, people like you and me will make a queue there. And you know what they will say? They will, they are the people who are asking for the compensation for the wrong you have done to them. <coughs> so a person will come and he'll say, oh Allah, he has swear at me. So Allah will say, okay, he has swear. Check it out. Did he swear or not? And indeed, Allah knows everything, but Allah wants to, to make it hujjah on him. They check the book. Yes, book will be checked. Yes, he has swear with this person at that time. All right, the equal to the harm he has caused, take his good deeds and give it to the person. The next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. Few moments, all this mountain of good deeds will finish. But still people in the queue will be there asking for compensation. So whatever you do in this dunya, Either good or the bad, never think even if that bad is little that you escape from it. No, you, do, you cannot escape from it. Because on the day of judgment you have to pay the compensation. So it is better for you to go in dunya and ask for sorry. Now, ask for pardon and forgiveness. That is better for you than on the day of judgment. Because at that time you will lose your good deeds. And entire your khulud, your forever life is dependent on that good deeds. So what will happen? Still people will be there. Allah will ask, okay, equal to the harm he has caused. Take their evil deeds and place in his account. And in few moments, all those mountains of good deeds will be converted into the mountains of evil deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. And this is the muflis. 
This is the bankrupt person, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned. Subhanallah. You should be feeling proud of being part of Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you should be grateful to Allah. You know, on that day, what will happen? Some of the uh, the Anbiya alaihi salatu salam will come when Allah is judging. Anbiya will come with their Ummah. You know, some of them have one person with them. The whole Ummah of the Nabi is one person. Some of them have few. Some of them have huge people, but some of them are one or two. Subhanallah. So if you are trying, working hard to explain Islam to somebody, and he's not listening, he's not accepting, don't get fed up. Anbiya, they spend whole life, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said some of them will come with only one person, because only that one embraced Islam on his hand. So when these people will come, so the people who deny them, they didn't believe, they will be there as well. So Allah will ask, why you didn't believe on this Nabi such and so and so? So they will say, this Nabi, yeah, we don't know him, he, he didn't come to us, he didn't give us da'wah. He didn't invite us to Islam. So Allah will say, oh, you didn't give da'wah to them? You are sent to give the da'wah, this Nabi's job is to invite people towards the hidayah, to the guidance. So have you not done it? So the Nabi will say, no Allah, I have done it. But these people are denying. <coughs> So Allah will ask him, okay, who is your shaheed? Who is your witness? So he'll say, my witness will be Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The Nabi came sometime, you know, thousands of years ago, but he is making you as a witness on the day of judgment, subhanAllah. So Allah will ask, Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad, how come? How come they will be Ummah? Call the Ummah, and they will be, Ummah will be asked. Do you know this Prophet has given da'wah to these people or not? So all the ummah will say, yes, Allah, we witness that he has given da'wah. But you are not there, how come you are giving witness? Quran. Because our Prophet has taught us that all the Anbiya, they did their job. This is the part of believing in, we believe in the messengers. You know the six articles of Iman, we believe in the messengers, one of the condition of that, believing it, all the Prophets, they did their job. All the messengers, they did their job. And we will be witness, subhanAllah. Look at the honor for this Ummah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us those who understand the honor. So what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَى عَلَى النَّاسِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you, so you will be the witness on the people, on the day of judgment. So dear brothers, remember, this hadith also reminds you about your responsibility as well. Your responsibility. As a Muslim, you need to be a da'i. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after him, there will be no prophet. So the responsibility is on us to convey the message to others. We need to understand this, subhanAllah. So there will be people when this judgment is taking place, they will deny. Oh, I didn't do this. Even though it is in their books, they will deny. No, no, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. Allah said, all right, okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seal their mouths. So they will not be able to speak. Seal their mouth. And then what Allah will say? Allah will say, all right, hands and legs and feet, now you speak. You speak. Thai, you speak. The first thing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first thing will speak out will be your thighs. They will speak out against you or in favor of you. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala protect all of us. So when they will be speaking, they will get so shocked. You know, as Allah has given ability to the mouth to speak now, Allah will give that ability to your hands, to your legs, to your feet, to your body. Today, to look after our body, we do halal, haram, everything. But this will be witness, whatever we are putting in, that will be the witness that Allah, He has made us, whatever we are today, with haram. SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So they will, they will be speaking, or as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, that the day when the enemies of Allah will be brought to the hellfire for whom you zaun and they will be made into the groups until they will come all, all of them so then what will happen shahida alayhim sam'uhum so all of a sudden their hearing will witness against them their hearing you know now it is taking everything in but that day everything will come out so whatever you are listening the ghibah the lies the haram stuff, the music, this all will, vis will give witness against you, absar and your sight. Whatever you are looking of, of the haram, everything will, will, and your skin, your skin will witness. 
Subhanallah, your skin, so many people look after their skin and put so much things, halal, haram, it doesn't matter. Subhanallah, they just put it on, put it on. But that will be witnessing. And when you enjoy with haram, haram relationship, when you touch things, haram relationship, your skin will be witnessing against you. So the people, out of the frustration, they will say to their skin, hey, why are you giving this witness against us? Why are you are witnessing against us? So the man, when he will be asking, so they will say, Allah kulla He is Allah. He has given us the power to speak today, the one who has given power to speak today to everything. So this all will be our witness. So this day of judgment is big rahmah to understand this all details so we can look after us in this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. And in that day, the believers, the moments, we need to understand this very well. Nobody will enter into Jannah only because of his good deeds. Everybody will go to Jannah with the, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said about himself. Even he said about himself that even I will not go into Jannah with the, without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at that hisab, for the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for them. And he will say this, it will be explained. Allah will say, okay, go. Believers will go. Okay, it will not be audited. Your hisab will not be audited, it will not be checked for the believers. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she replied to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and she said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that everybody will be given the hisab. Everybody Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do, take the hisab from him. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, O oh, Aisha, yes, that hisab for the believers is just our look, just it will be given explaining everything before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah will not account. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count, uh, come to accounting and auditing, halak, everybody will be destroyed. Everybody will be in trouble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So these are the events which will happen on the day of judgment. There are two more things. The one is the shafa'ah. At that time, people will come and ask Anbiya alayhi salatu salam to do the shafa'ah, but this topic will be among this series, a detailed topic, inshallah, you make sure you come and you understand the shafa'ah, the intercession from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the Anbiya alayhi salatu salam, apart from shafa'ah, they will be given the hawd. They will be given the hawd, the pound of the water. So where everybody, all the Anbiya alayhi salatu salam will be, giving the water to their own people. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, I, Muhammad, wish that most of the people should come to my pond. So the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will be huge in number compared to other um, alayhi salatu wasalam. Huge in number. And this how, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa explained, that masiratu hashahar, the width of it will be a month, a month width. So it's huge, huge, huge. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be there and about this pound, the water in this will be coming directly from Jannah. It will be more tastier than the honey, more clear and brighter than the snow and the milk. This is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And in this water, when people will come to drink, the cups there will be made of gold and silver and it will be as many as you can see the stars in the heaven. Because that much Ummah of the Prophet will be there. And the Prophet ﷺ will be giving this to all the people. So the first people to drink, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, and then Muhajirun and then Ansar. And then when they drink, then everybody from the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, they will drink. There'll be so many people will try to get that water. There'll be so many different, different people try to get that water. Among them, those who did not believe in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at all. So they will be thrown away. They'll be thrown away. No, go away. There'll be people who will murtad, who left Islam. He was a Muslim and then he became 
he left Islam, he became something else. Or he does not want to believe in anything. So those people also will come. And they will be rejected, they will be thrown away. They will be hypocrites as well. They will be hypocrites. Hypocrites are those who look like us. They pray with us, they give charity, they, they stay with the Muslim community and they look, their, their outer appearance is like it's Muslims. But inside, they are not with Muslims. They are enemies of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. That their inside and outside will be different. They will come, they will be rejected and thrown. And there will be another people. And these people will look like Muslims again, They're like the hypocrites. And they will be thrown away. And these people are Mubtadi, the one who invents the thing in the religion, as a religion, after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To understand that the religion is enough for all of us. What was that at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sahaba? That is enough for us to take us to Jannah. We don't need to bring something new out of our intelligence, out of our love to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa something which was not at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You know, for all these people, these non-believers, they will be known they are non-believers on that day because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said on the Hawd, when this many people will come, I will recognize all of them because of the effect of the wadu. Effect of the wadu. You know, when you do the wadu, you wash your hands, your face, your feet, this will be shiny at that day. That will be bright at that day. So with that brightness, the Prophet said, oh, he is my person coming. So these people, those who did not believe, they will be known, they will be rejected. Those who left Islam, because before that, if they have done the wadu, from that one, they will be coming, and Prophet will be letting them, but the angels will say, no, 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 these are the people who have done irtidah, who left Islam, they will be rejected. The hypocrites, because they do the wadu, with their shiny faces, they will be coming, and then angels will throw them away. And this Mubta there, the one who does the bid'ah, he will come, and then the, they will have the same thing, so the Prophet ﷺ will ask about them, hey, they look like my people, why you are throwing them away? So they will say, oh Prophet, you don't know what they have done, new things in the religion after you. Ma ahdasu ba'da. What they have invented in the religion. So the Prophet ﷺ will reply and say, Suhqan, suhqan liman ghayyara deeni ba'di. Let him away, let him away, go away, go away, the one who changed my religion after. So the religion it was at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and today has to be the same. If it is not the same, then there is a big problem in our religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So these are the people, four people, they will not get the, uh, the uh, water from the uh, pond of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And this pond, once somebody drinks, he will not be thirsty until he will get inside the Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us. And the last thing which will happen on that day will be a sirat, the bridge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the bridge, and this bridge will be on the hellfire on the hellfire. And then there are so many details about this bridge, but this bridge is on the hellfire and it will be really, really dark, very, very dark, very severe uh, place to cross it. So everybody have to cross that one to get inside the Jannah. So all the people will go. So those who did not believe because of the darkness, they will fall into the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Some of the believers, as per their belief, they will be giving the light, light as a mountain. So they will just, pass that bridge very quickly. As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, some of them will pass so quickly as the lightning. Some of them will pass so quickly as the, the very strong wind. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, some of them will pass as the fast horse or the camel running, or somebody is running by himself, or jogging, or walking, or crawling. So everybody based on their Islam, their Iman, their reward, they will have little light or more light and they will be crossing. And some of the people will have so little light that it will blink and it will be off. It will blink and it will be off. So with that blink, they will try to cross and cross and cross that bridge. And some of them will cross with that ability and some of them will fall based on their Iman. And on this bridge, on both sides there will be hooks and these hooks will be picking up the people who do not deserve to go to Jannah and they will make sure they will fall into the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So this is the bridge. Everybody have to 
go through this. And this all people will go through the, this one. And there's a hadith, beautiful hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bashir al mashain bin nur al-tam, give a, a yawm al-qiyamah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, give the glad tidings of the full light, full light on that bridge on the day of judgment. Who are these people? al mashain fi al those who walk in the darkness towards the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means those who come to Salatul Fajr and Salatul Isha, these are the people who will get the full light. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us to offer. So these people will cross and the rest will fall. When they all cross, then they will come. After that bridge, there will be a small bridge. As in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it's called Qantara. So some of the, 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 not a lot of details are there. Some of the scholars says this is another bridge. This is another bridge. This is not on the hellfire. After that one, before you go inside the Jannah. So all the people of Jannah will stand there and they will ask forgiveness from each other. Whatever they had in this world, they will forgive each other. And then they will enter into Jannah to Firdaus al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count all of us among them. So these were a few of the events which will happen on the Day of Judgment. <coughs> okay. It's already time is up, just I'll take five more minutes, inshallah. Is all right, five more minutes? Yeah. Inshallah, okay. Some of the people will be raised from their graves, okay? As I said in the beginning. They will be on their faces. And what else? The camel? No, 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 before that one, before the camel, yes, after the camel, yes. D yeah, dumb, deaf, and blind, okay? If you do not want to be among, of, uh, among those, so what you need to do? What you need to do? This is really, really important. What you need to do? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained about them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the guidance to all of us. You know, through the messengers, the guidance come. So this guidance, the Quran, and the explanation of it with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so the sunnah, the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is the guidance for us. And this guidance has to be understood as the understanding of Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala an. So this is the guidance, this is the dhikr, this is the remembrance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ أَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ذَنْكَ The one who turns away his face from this dhikr, the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he will have very hard life, life full of hardship. In this dunya and akhira boot. Even though, Materialistically, a person will be rich in this world, but the life is really, really hard. He'll be in depression, he'll, he won't be able to go to sleep without pills and a lot of problems and things like that, okay? No real satisfaction of the heart. So this is the heart. And then in the, in the day of judgment, he'll be, have this all difficulty. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And then he said, وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى and we are going to raise him on the day of judgment blind. So he will say, oh Allah, why you raise me blind? So he will say that, and I, I used to see, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply and say, Qala kathalika tatka ayatuna fanasitaha. Likewise, our signs came to you, the Quran and Sunnah came to you, you forget about it. You didn't bother about it. So today we are not going to bother about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. So if you don't want to be among that category, so what you need to do, you need to be among those people who stick to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is first thing. The second thing, on the Day of Judgment, if you want to protect yourself, you need to have a lot of good deeds. A lot of good deeds. Never think even minor good deed is a minor and don't bother about it. No. Every good deed counts. Even as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a harmful thing you remove from the street, that will count as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man ja'a bil hasana falahu khayrun minha. The one who comes with the good deed, he will receive the better reward than the, what he has done. So in Islam, minimum return is 10 times. Minimum return is 10 times. If you do one, Allah will give you back 10. This is the minimum return. And then, وَهُمْ مِنْ فَزَعِ يَوْمَيْدٍ آمِنُونَ And on the day of judgment, they will be safe from the fear. So always remember these good deeds. And then, in terms of you fall into that category where these people have a lot of trouble and problem and punishments and things. So if you want to understand that, so listen to this hadith of the Prophet He said, The wrongdoing, the single wrong thing you do on this day, one gul, one operation on this earth will be zulumat. It will be so many on the day of judgment. It will be increased so many. So it will be in big trouble. 
So in general ruling, you need to be away from all sorts of zulum, all sorts of wrongdoing, and doing a lot of good deeds. So that will save you on the day of judgment. But on the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained a couple of things which will help on that day, on the day of judgment, okay? So among the thing is good manners. Having good manners will give you the seat next to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another thing, a person, he is able to buy the luxurious clothes, the nicest clothes, the garment, very best, best, uh, brands you can buy and you can wear. When you wear it, you feel proud and arrogant between your friends. But because they bring that proud and arrogance to you, so out of the fear of Allah, you don't want to wear it. So the Prophet Muhammad said, you leave that sort of clothes, that sort of clothes and the shoes and everything which bring the arrogance inside you, that brand bring that arrogance inside you, you just leave it for the sake of Allah, you will have mercy of Allah on the day of judgment. So remember this. A lot of us, we want to have a better clothes. Yes, we can wear nice clothes, but some of the brands, as soon as you put on, you start looking others, you know, down. Subhanallah, this comes automatically. The shaitan brings that inside. If something like this, just leave it for the sake of Allah. That will give you the mercy of Allah on the day of judgment. And also do a lot of wudu. A lot of wudu because you'll be shining on that day, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has mentioned. And also hold your anger. Those who hold the anger, they will have mercy on the day of judgment with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Try to hide the sins of other people. Try to hide the sins of other people in this world. If you know somebody is doing wrong, try to hide it. Because if you hide here, Allah will hide your sins on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us among these people. So these were a few of the things which our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has explained and some of the events which happen on the day of judgment. So I'll stop here uh, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if there was something wrong, uh, it was from me and from shaitan, may Allah forgive me and remove the effect of it uh, from our hearts and whatever was the good, it was from Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah accept that from us. If anybody have any question, I'll take that question, otherwise we'll finish it. Thank you.